morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Gimmick Pokemon have been around since the beginning, and despite the vast majority of them being completely useless, occasionally we are blessed with a decent one. But really, what defines a gimmick Pokemon? It's not really something that's been well established, it's not like the Pokedex is a label for them or anything, it's more up to fan interpretation. Like, most people probably wouldn't say that Eevee, Feebas, or Aegislash are gimmick Pokemon, but some would say that they are. So for the sake of this video, I'll be abiding by this checklist. The Pokemon cannot evolve or evolve from a different Pokemon, at least when it was introduced. It centers around a unique move, ability, or battle style, or it was clearly designed to showcase a certain mechanic. And most importantly, it has to be bad. Okay, that last one is a joke, but it is sadly a common theme, as we'll soon find out. But before that, a word from today's sponsor, the Ridge Wall. I've had my Ridge Wallet for a few months now, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's durable, it's compact, it fits at the 12 cards inside of it, which is great for me because I am stuffed with my Christmas gift cards at the moment, and it even comes in all these other cool colors. But the Ridge doesn't just make wallets, they also sent me their new key case, which holds up the six keys all nice and tightly so they don't jingle around and get caught in your pocket. And right now, you can get the best available offer for both the Ridge Wallet and the Ridge key case using my link down below, ridge.com slash jpr. That's ridge.com slash jpr. Thank you, Ridge Wallet, for sponsoring. Let's get back to the video. Of course, the original gimmick Pokemon was Ditto. And what's funny about Ditto is that this guy serves almost no purpose in Gen 1, other than showing off the transform mechanic. Not that it's one that you'd really ever want to use, since Ditto is so slow and frail. Yet despite that, Ditto has become one of the most useful and iconic Pokemon in the franchise. Maybe not in battle still, but through other means. Of course, with the introduction of breeding in Gen 2, Ditto went from obsolete to must-have overnight. Be honest, does anybody actually bother to sit down and memorize the egg groups for Pokemon? Probably not, because Ditto simplifies the process so much. And with the introduction of Masuda Method in Gen 4, a foreign Ditto with good IVs is more valuable than a sealed copy of Pokemon Box, whether you're a shiny hunter or a competitive battler. So, for its time, Ditto was as bad as a gimmick Pokemon could get, but honestly, it's probably become the best gimmick Pokemon as time marches on. It's an absurdly marketable Pokemon with tons of merch, mostly just related to that one episode of the anime where the Ditto couldn't change its eyes when it transformed, but it became so well known that a lot of people thought that every Ditto was like that. As a kid, I vividly remember collecting all 10 of the Ditto cards from the EX Delta Species set that had all the same dot eyes, so I have to say, it was effective. Even in the games, Ditto has become somewhat better over time. In Gen 5, its hidden ability Imposter at least gave it a fighting chance, although it's still not the most common because formula leading an actual strategy with Ditto is harder than filing my taxes. But I still appreciate Ditto just for its utility outside of battle. It definitely went from the worst to the best. Gen 2 is certainly where gimmicks started becoming a little more widespread, to varying degrees of success. First up is Wobbuffet, the first Pokemon that is unable to attack without first being attacked. I know Wobbuffet now evolves from Why Not, but that wasn't the case in Gen 2, so it still counts. Though I've personally never even considered using Wobbuffet in battle because frankly it just seems like an equally large pain to use as Ditto, it's at least a unique concept and can wield good results in certain situations. For instance, in some Nuzlocke's, Wobbuffet can literally be the star of the show. And like Ditto, Wobbuffet is still widely seen as a fan favorite and a widely marketed Pokemon. Though this more than likely has to do with Jesse's Wobbuffet in the anime than his actual versatility in the games. I'd still lean towards the best side, but I mostly say that just to balance out what's coming up. As for the first gimmick Pokemon with a truly negative reputation, that would likely go to Smeargle. Yeah. Smeargle, in theory, isn't that bad of a gimmick, it's easily the most customizable Pokemon due to its signature move Sketch allowing it to use virtually any move in existence, so long as you're able to sketch it, which can be quite the chore in itself. One other slight problem, Smeargle's stats are so god-awful that even if it sketches V-Create, it's going to hit with the same force as a baby swinging its fist. So it basically just becomes this super toxic Pokemon that abuses a combination of all the best status moves. And as we discussed in the moves video, this is also the reason why Darkrai's Dark Void got butchered. So it's safe to say that this Pokemon is very much disliked by the Darkrai fandom. But Smeargle's not even the worst gimmick Gen 2 has to offer. Enter Unknown. Pretty much the most useless Pokemon ever made. Even worse than Gen 1 Ditto. And despite that, do any of my fellow boomers remember this particular teaser trailer for the third movie? More legendary than Lugia. More mysterious than Mew. Their strength, unbelievable. 
More legendary than Lugia? More mysterious than Mew? Their strength unbelievable? Did anybody bother to look at the stats? Who on God's green earth was responsible for misleading so many impressionable children back in 2001? Okay, it was Winter Brothers. That's understandable. But still, this Pokemon is so pointlessly overhyped. After that movie came out, I had to come up with a college thesis to convince all the kids in the neighborhood that Unknown is actually garbage. Its gimmick is that it has 28 forms and only learns hidden power. You know, a move that 99% of other Pokemon can also learn. And there is nothing more disappointing than finding some cool looking ancient ruins, walking around for 10 steps, getting into a wild battle and realizing, oh, it's just another unknown dumping ground. This Pokemon's whole deal is, ooh, look at us, we're so mysterious. And then they proceed to never answer the mystery. What even is the mystery? That Game Freak continues to dump hours of manpower into the worst Pokemon ever conceived? Unknown is dissatisfaction incarnate. You always think, hmm, maybe I'll get something from collecting all the unknown that isn't just ball stickers this time, but nope, you'll never get anything. Nothing but the realization that your free time has been shamelessly swindled by a pointless Pokemon. Yeah, that was probably the exact presentation I gave my friends back in the day, come to think of it. Oh god, in all my rage against Unknown, I just realized that we forgot to talk about Delibird. Delibird, of course, is a gimmick for only learning one move naturally, present, and then randomly drill peck starting in Gen 7. I don't really know why. That's like putting scotch tape on a wrecked car, you're not saving anything. Look, all I have to say is, even if present was a good move, Delibird would still be awful. I will say it's more marketable and likable than something like Unknown or Smeargle, and I don't hate the idea of a Santa-inspired Pokemon, but man, this thing just fails to be usable in any fashion. So, you'd think that after that train wreck of a generation, we'd steer away from gimmicks in future generations. Nope, Gen 3 came out locked and loaded with these bad boys. Well, in fairness, it did give us a gimmick to rival Ditto as the greatest of all time, Shedinja. Hey, I'm not cheating, it's technically not an evolution. It's a special... thing. This idea of an extremely fragile Pokemon that can also completely shut an opponent down if they're unprepared for it is so freaking cool. Looking at Shedinja objectively, it shouldn't be a threat, but if your opponent has one, you have to respect it. There's no other choice. If your opponent wipes out your options for KOing Shedinja, you just auto-lose the battle. In VGC, sometimes I've seen people carry Shedinja in the back of their party, only to never use it. It's just there as a mind game, and even if it never touches the battlefield, it succeeds in drastically changing the way your opponent plays. If only the other Gen 3 gimmicks were nearly as cool. Cast Form, a Pokemon created by the Weather Institute to help them tell the weather in a specific area. J just look at the sky! Back in the day, scientists used to create genetically modified weapons capable of destroying worlds. Now they just create miniature versions of the Pillsbury Doughboy. Now, admittedly, I like Cast Form, but mostly because he's a meme. And he actually does have an amazing move pool, which unfortunately is held back by its mediocre stats. But keeping my personal bias aside, it's just a demonstration of Weather's effect on battles, and it's the first Pokemon that can actually shift forms in battle if you don't count Ditto. I think it would be cooler if they kept adding new cast form forms in newer games, like Sandstorm cast form, or Windy cast form, or Foggy cast form. Well, even then, I'm not really sure if anybody would be excited about that. But hey, he got a slight buff in recent games. Starting in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, if you have a shiny cast form, its other forms will have their own shiny versions now. I don't know why this wasn't a thing 20 years ago, but baby steps, guys. Baby steps. Anyhow, where do I assign this guy? I guess I can't say he's a good Pokemon, but as far as gimmicks go, he's one of the better ones, I suppose? Especially when its competition is like... Kecleon, who just changes types. And not even at will, the opponent controls it! This is like a crime against game design, why wasn't Protein his original ability? I know he gets it now, but still, color change was the whole gimmick! Moving into Gen 4, Chantot is a strange case of a gimmick Pokemon, most because its gimmick where you record your own voice using Chatter and use it as a move has been pretty much irrelevant since Gen 5, as it only works with the Nintendo DS's microphone feature. In addition to Chatter just being a massively confusing attack, yeah, I'm not reading all of that, it's not even a great gimmick, since the audio is incredibly distorted, presumably to prevent people from recording inappropriate words and playing them online. Come on guys, this is a Pokemon game, not a Call of Duty lobby, let's be civil here. Since the feature was removed in Gen 6, Game Freak has at least attempted to make Chatot into a usable Pokemon, giving it access to Boom Burst as well as a few other viable moves, but really without its signature feature to mimic human speech, it's just another in a long line of forgettable and 
and often quite bad normal flying types. As for Gen 5, surprisingly, it doesn't have any gimmick Pokémon, despite being the largest generation, at least by the standards I'm using. So instead, I'll use this time to remind you to go grab a tall glass of water, because dehydration is not good. Here, I'll have a sip with you. <sighs> Alright, also, you should subscribe if you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate that. And if you are subscribed, just leave a like, that would be cool too. Gen 6 has only one Pokémon I'd truly consider a gimmick, and that's Furfu. Although this Pokémon certainly isn't great, it's at least usable, which makes it better than 90% of the gimmick Pokémon we've discussed. Its actual gimmick is the many haircuts you can give it, which falls in line with the Kalos region's focus on fashion and customization, so I think it's pretty serviceable as a gimmick Pokémon, it fits the region very well. The only downside is that as a mono-normal type, it's kind of forgettable, but I still like it, it's good. In Gen 7, we have Wishy Wash whose gimmick is that using its ability schooling, it goes from the Pokémon with the single lowest base stat total of them all, to one of the highest non-legendary base stat totals with 620, only being topped by Slacking and Palafin Hero Form. This is by far the biggest stat swing that any Pokémon goes through, getting a massive 475 points when it transforms. Most Pokémon in this video don't even have a base stat total of 475! And although competitively this Pokémon is still practically unusable despite that massive swing, as it still has to tank a hit in order to transform, which is no easy task, I like this idea more than most of the gimmicks. Even if in reality it now feels like a beta version of Palafin. Also, the name, Wishy Washy, 10 out of 10, I'll put it in the best category just for that. But that's not the only water type gimmick Alola has, because Pukumuku is right there. Pukumuku is very similar to Wobbuffet, being they can only use status moves, counter, and mirror coat, which I suppose is fitting for a sea cucumber, and its laid back, non aggressive style makes it the perfect Alola region mascot. Although spitting out its internal organs to attack is a little bit unsettling, not gonna lie. I think I will go with true neutral on this one. I don't think it's particularly great or bad. And I guess Oricorio is kinda on the fence as a gimmick Pokemon. Transforming isn't really a huge deal anymore, but I suppose between that and its signature ability Dancer, you could make an argument that it's a gimmick Pokemon. And I'll say I really like this one. Revelation Dance ensures that it always has a stab move, which is cool, and I like how it adapts from island to island. Much like its real world counterpart, the Hawaiian Honey Creeper. Like Pukumuku, it feels very integral to the Alola region. And if you're wondering why it has those specific types on every island, it's because the real islands of Hawaii each have their own official colors. And those colors, from right to left, are red, pink, yellow, and purple. Which not only match Oricorio's forms, but also the colors of the Tapu shells. It's definitely a remarkably inspired Pokémon, so I'd say it's in the best category for sure. In Gen 8, the closest thing to a gimmick Pokémon is probably Alchemy, although it does evolve from Milcery, which breaks the rules. Like, Furfuru is just a customizable Pokémon and not much else. But I suppose the true gimmicks of this region would be the Fossils. Their whole purpose is mostly to encourage trading because the Fossil's rarity depends entirely on which version you're playing. And like Oricorio, these guys do have some real-life lore associated with them being inspired by the incorrectly assembled Crystal Palace dinosaurs in London. So these Pokémon are basically just making fun of real-life British archaeologists, which is fine by me. They're decently funny and are somewhat usable compared to other gimmicks. Or very usable if you're only counting Dracovish. So yeah, they good. And for Gen 9, if we're not counting Paradox Pokémon or Squawkabilly, who I don't think is anything gimmicky beyond different colors and being bad, this region's gimmick Pokémon are certainly Tatsugiri and Dondozo. And honestly, these guys have the opposite problem that most gimmick Pokémon have. They're too good! Dondozo is like public enemy number one right now, regardless of the format. But no matter how annoying you may find these Pokémon, inspiration-wise, I think they're really cool. They're meant to represent the classic trope of brains and brawn, and I think they pull it off well, if not a little too well. And the best part is, even if you completely ignore their commander gimmick, these Pokémon are completely fine to be used on their own. Even Tatsugiri, who's supposed to be the weak one. It may not light the world on fire, but it's far from being Delibird. And with that, thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this and leave a like if you enjoyed. And as always, shout out to my lovely channel members. I'll see you guys next time.